You are listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast brought to you by Birmingham Live. Hello and welcome back to the Claret and Blue podcast. I'm John Townley, joined by Villa club correspondent Ashley Priest to look ahead to Villa's trip to Goodison Park on Saturday to face uh, very much an inform Everton side. The press conference for Villa was on Thursday, so as we record yesterday. Um, but there's still a couple of bits to talk about, isn't there, Ash? So, um, yeah, ha- how are you? Yeah, all good, mate. Looking forward to the trip. I do like Goodison Park. It's yeah, only yeah. Two, two hours away, so not a long one. And, um, and yeah, got a good record against Everton, haven't we? Unbeaten since promotion. It won five, drew two. So, a um, bit of a bogey side for them. So, hopefully, we burst Sean Dodge's bubble. He's won two at home, hasn't he? Two out of two at home. Um, yeah. We need a win as well. So, someone's got to give, I think. So, um, fingers crossed, positive results. Because uh, losing three on the spin isn't nice, is it? It's just not nice at all. So, hopefully, back to winning ways tomorrow, John. Yeah, you mentioned three three defeats, three defeats on the bounce. Obviously, Arsenal and City coming our last two. So, no real surprise. And Leicester was... Uh... You know, you have those games every now and again, I suppose. But I think there could be an easier game than going to Everton. Um, yeah. The team, although they are in relegation trouble, they're not. So they're not playing like they are. They're playing like they are because they're trying to avoid relegation. But it's a very, very difficult um, task. It won't be easy. They've, as you say, won both of their home games one nil. In a way, I'm a bit like, well, if we can get a goal at Goodison Park, there's every chance that we can just nick the game because I can't see them scoring otherwise than a set piece and. That due to Villa's sort of flaws and set pieces recently, but also their um, sort of prowess. I think Tarkovsky and McNeil, they scored for Arsenal, against Arsenal, sorry. Then against Leeds as well, They, um, I think they got a set piece too, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, yeah uh, a massive game for them too. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's Villa and another team in the bottom half that Everton have to play at home. And then throughout the rest of the season, they're... They, they, their home games, they don't face another team that's currently in the bottom half. So that's quite tricky because, you know, that sort of team are probably not going to get too many points away from home. But then at home, you're looking at um, as many points as you can. So yeah, it'll be a crackling atmosphere. Yeah. A, a yeah, test for Villa. I suppose that's a test for the Villa players as well. I don't know how many of those we've had <laughs> this season. But yeah, for Everton, massive game at the sort of business end of the season we're approaching now. So that'll be, um, that'll, uh, I suppose, test some of the players, as I say, um, as well, not just the performance, but also the atmosphere as well. Yeah, as well, with the Emery hanging him out to draw last week as well, as he did with the players as well. Um, can they react to that or will they wilt a little bit and go into the shells and, and be 1 2 0 down before you know it? And you know, what I, mean? I think Everton win tomorrow, the four points behind Villa, given the trouble that Everton have been in. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a crossroad, really. Um, the epic character test tomorrow, like you've said, John, for the players, and um, Emery criticised them. Last week, and yeah, the challenge is then for to go out there and put in a positive result, stop the mini rots we're in, and get back get back on track as it were. So um, yeah, the challenge is there for the, for the players to hopefully do that. Yeah, we'll move on to what was said in the press. So not too much uh, in terms of looking at Everton. We know what they were going to bring, and I think Emery said that he knows what a Dutch team is going to be all about, and the players should know as well um, by now. The main sort of comments he spoke about uh, a couple of players, at least that's those are the questions from the broadcast section. Um, I mean, Martinez has been sort of the main topic, I suppose, on the lips of mm. pundits and fans since since the Arsenal game and maybe since he returned from the World Cup as well. I wouldn't say he hasn't been the same player, I think that's a bit harsh, but there's certainly been um, a few, um, I don't know, moments, should we say, that we don't really expect from him and then sort of decisions as well to go up uh, in the last minute, as he did against Arsenal. That was a... Uh, Pretty much the first question that was put to Emery. Yeah. Um, he, bat- he sort of batted it back as uh, he's the best goalkeeper Villa for Villa, sorry, because there's obviously been a bit of speculation that Villa might consider offers. Um, I don't know. I, I think my sort of stance on it is that we know Martinez has played, what, like four years of his career, like at the top in terms of in the Premier League. He's wasted a lot of time in his career. So he wants to get you know Champions League football as soon as he can, probably in the next you know five years or so. That's this, I don't know, the sort of end of his career the next five years. So he'll want to do it at some point and Villa obviously aren't going to get there at least any time soon. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if the top club wanted him, there'd be, you know, sort of negotiations that would happen. But Emery, at least at the moment, sort of saying, you know, he's, he's the best keeper for Villa and because he's won the World Cup as well, he's now focused on Villa. So there's almost, he's won the biggest thing. So why chase more? But I'm not too sure if I uh, sort of go along with that argument. 
No, not at all. But yeah, I've got the got the feeling they're both on the same page. They had a one to one meeting this week, given Emery's comments about his goalkeeper in the immediate aftermath after Arsenal, not yeah. liking going for that corner. Um, the example you've given there. So yeah, they've had a one to one, they've had a bit of a heart to heart, and he said he's he's fully committed. Next chance of him now is to get Aston Villa in Europe. So yeah, we'll see in the swim. I think there's a business decision, business decision to be made there, John, like you've said. Will the offers come 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 there? I'm 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 not sure. We'll see. Um, let's say negotiations might may, may take place. It all depends who comes in, whether Martinez wants to wants to move on, I guess. Um but yeah, at the moment I've got the vibe that they're very much on the same page. Martin is fully committed to Villa. He's grateful for the chance he's given him for the platform. Without Villa, he wouldn't he wouldn't be winning the World Cup. I think he he'll, he'll be the first to say that. So yeah, um pleased with yeah, I'm quite happy with Emmy's comments yesterday and for me, hopefully, he leads Villa into a, a new era next season onwards. So, um, yeah, oh, for me, I, I wouldn't entertain any, any offers. I'd build yeah. around him, I would. Um, I like, really like him. And, I mean, it's always a, mis- it's always a risk, isn't it, when you sell, sell your best keeper, you're yeah. going get, to get, get a good, good one in who's going to hit the ground running straight away, whereas Martinez, for me, one of the best in the world right now. So, hopefully, yeah, he remains that going into yeah. next season. I think that's a good point, especially that my, at no point are we suggesting that Martinez is going to kind of look for a move or anything like that. It's completely the opposite. Um, and obviously it gives so much more than just being a good goalkeeper on the pitch as well. He's a leader among the dressing room and amongst the players. He was for Argentina, who have got the best player arguably ever um, and others. So, yeah, sort of invaluable. We don't, you know, it's almost like a football manager sort of thing of, oh, well, we can sell Martinez because it'll bring him good money and you could get a keeper that's half the price and who's good with his feet. And it's, that doesn't really add up because you're losing a whole lot in terms of what Martinez brings and a new goalkeeper wouldn't just come in and all of a sudden be perfect for Emery. Um, so yeah, I think Villa needs to sort of watch what they're doing there. But I think those conversations will probably just continue until the summer. It's one to keep an eye on. Yeah. Um, another sort of talking point, I suppose, from the presser was Ollie Watkins as well. Another player that's sort of been under the limelight. Is it four goals he's scored in four games? Yeah, yeah four and four. Uh, I yeah. think it's... I think he breaks some sort of record if he gets a fifth tomorrow. Is it the most uh, in a row since '85? I think I forget it. '85. Paul Ride out <laughs> before yeah, my know. time, before your time, John. So um, hopefully, yeah, I'll, watching, remember yeah. Ride out. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I actually never heard of him, and I thought I would have should have heard of him if he's got that good a record. Um, so yeah, but that's uh, that would be something for Watkins, wouldn't it? If he scores at Goodison and Emery again has been singing his uh, praises in the press conference. Yeah, he fancy, I fancy him big time tomorrow. I, I really do. I like the way he's talking now, Watkins. Yeah. Fancies himself against any centre back now. This is not the Watkins we've been used to, really. Watkins has usually been quite humble, quite, um, quite a bit taken aback by where, how far he's come now, being a Premier League striker. But now he's, he's, he's embracing that. He's Villa's main man. I think, I think Danny Ings being sold in January has helped him um, in terms of just, just relieving that little pressure behind him before. He's only go-to guy now, and he's full of confidence. To finish last week was um, I just fancied him. But as soon as he shifted onto his left foot, I mean, his control for Cash's ball at the top, he, he, a bit loose, but he went one on one, stood him up, and um, said, "I'll take you on. I'll have you." He scored. Um, I'm fancying tomorrow as well. Uh, yeah. Oozing confidence, and like you say, he's talking, talking, talking it as well. So, yeah, I fancy him tomorrow. Yeah, five, five on the spoon. Why not? One of the most informed strikers in the in the league right now. Got to be, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah Rashford for, for, for goal scoring. So, um, and, and Villa got him. So, yeah, well, I wonder if he can break that 14 goal record from his first season. I think he's eight away, 15 to go. Mm-hmm. Um, fancy him to do that as well. So, um, just looks unplayable at the moment, John. Really does exactly. You, you, you that's the point. You, we haven't seen Watkins as much. Like, I think in this first season when he got 14. It was he scored 14 goals because he played every game in the season and he was you know playing well and he was getting it in patches. But at the moment he had I think it was one goal in 11 or something like that up until Gerard left. Yeah. So for him to now be put in the run of form that he is, it means that he's almost condensed it. Almost yeah, he's, he's kind of done half a season's sort of goal scoring if that makes sense. So that's probably why it, it you know, appears so much better as well. When obviously we had a Jack Grealish supplying so much of his. Um, chances and goals in that first year so to be doing it just because Emery's landed now it's really good in terms of how I say how it's adapted how other players can adapt as well I know Emery also said that he's like um, an example to his teammates he, he mentioned that some players have adapted some not as much yet but it's good to see that 
it's there. You know, it's not only a couple of players who have adapted. It's what Watkins has shown you what you can achieve under Emery, I suppose. And yeah. I, I've said it for a while. You can't. I know a lot of people yeah. criticize Watkins for whatever reason. I think that's mainly because he was in a one-man, you know, strike force and you had yeah. the wings on the side. But in a two-man, what he gives you in terms of the pressing and all of that, you can't replace that. And if you're going to improve your attacking line, you have to improve the person next to him because he gives you so much Watkins. And if you're going to sort of take that burden off him in terms of goal scoring, then you've got other options to do that. And I think that's, again, why he's um, playing so well at the moment. But what did you make of those comments in terms of him being an example to his teammates? Is that Emery suggesting that a couple of players need to follow what he's saying more? Or is it just Watkins' work ethic and he fits the style of play at the moment? Yeah, I think a bit of both there, John. I think he's I think training, he's, he's top-notch. I think he's kicked on now and he's doing all the right things for Emery, uh, doing what's asked, whereas in recent weeks, the, the majority of the players haven't been doing what the manager's been telling them to. So, um, yeah, Watkins is the star pupil, as it were, at the bottom of the present. And, yeah, Emery spoke really highly of him yesterday at the press conference and... Yeah, one of the most informed players in, in the league right now. So hopefully that continues as well. Yeah, and he had a mention for John Duran as well. Uh, I think he did he take, potentially tease that he might be playing. Uh, what can you tell us about him? I, I've, I can't really remember the quotes, but I know he spoke about him and mentioned that he's been impressed by, by him so far, but also at the same time, he's got a lot of learning to do because he's still only... He turned 19 in December, John Duran. So as yeah. much as we've been really impressed, there's a long way to go yet. Yeah, he was asked about whether Watkins and Duran can play as a two up front, right. which he said, he said, yeah, they did that against Man City, uh, which worked quite well later on. But um, I don't think he was, he's ready for a start just yet. Given the comments Amy made yesterday, he, he spoke about him being a bit too excited at times, um, out of possession, um, still a bit raw in that sense. And he, he's very much a work in progress. So I think Emery's kind of mo- trying to mould him at body more. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, I think he's a few, couple of weeks away from a start either, um, given what Emery's saying. I don't think he trusts him to start a game yet defensively as well, um, given what's asked. So I think he's moulding him into what he wants at present. And and yeah, I think that later down the line, next few, few weeks, I think we'll, we'll, we might see John Duran start, but I, I can't see him coming into the, the cauldron tomorrow at Goodison Park to start. But I've been, pre- I've been pleased with what I've seen, John. I really have. Yeah. He looks a, a diamond in the rough. He really does. Stature, very strong. I thought he was on for the winner last week um, and he bared down on going in front of the Alton. So, yeah, it's getting close. Um, but, yeah, the early signs are good and, and yeah, I'm excited by, by his potential. Yeah, really impressed by what I've seen as well so far. He, he just causes problems for defenders and I think that's all you can ask from a player of, of his age to sort of get around the pitch. Yeah, he does that, but he's not like, I don't know, he's not lightweight, but he's also quite skillful in what he does as well. He, he's not... Yeah. Yeah. He's not a headless chicken. He, he seems to be calculating what he does. And obviously for Emery, that has to go the other way too. As, he, as you mentioned, he, he needs to be defensively um, you know, switched on and he needs to be the sort of full package to start games and lead the line. Uh, but that might happen before the end of the season. But yeah, I doubt it against Everton. And I think that sort of player, I'd rather come on with 20 minutes to go than, yeah. I don't know, potentially another player like um, like we might have had in Danny Ings, who you know, fair, made a good impact in that Wolves game, granted. But... I think more often than not, you need someone like a John Durant to come on and just cause chaos because yeah. that's um, and that's what he has done. So uh, the only other one, sorry, the only other player that uh, Emery sort of mentioned was Leon Bailey. He said that he he hasn't quite got the right position for him yet, or something yeah, along. Telling, yeah. And mm-hmm. I, exactly that, I thought he was a bit telling because he has played. Has he not played every game or started at least yeah. most of like maybe eight out of ten games? I know he didn't start against Arsenal. Um, but I, I thought potentially, I don't know, if you said Bailey's been inconsistent or whatever, then I'd take that as a, you know, you can't really argue with that and neither can Bailey. But to say that he hasn't found his right found his right position yet, I thought was a bit confusing because he played him in the same position with Watkins for the whole of his tenure so far, I think. So you would have thought, well, surely you would try him out wide or bring him back ever so slightly or whatever it may be. But he seems to almost be a... I don't know at the moment, almost like a stopgap, I suppose, if that's what he's um, saying. I don't know. I don't think those comments are particularly encouraging coming up to the summer, coupled with the fact that we know that he's going to sign a striker or he wants to. You yeah. wonder why that sort of leaves Bailey. But I suppose, again, strength and depth, that's what you need. But I think for Bailey to kind of hear that, that's probably not the best um, thing to hear. But again, at the same time, he did say he's determined to win his place back and get back into form, all of the sort of uh, normal stuff. Yeah, what did you think of those comments? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't really stack up. I know Bailey's played on the right hand side a couple of times, even with Brendan playing central. But 
But, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think Bailey's becoming more of an impact sub now. Um, come on, did, did okay against Arsenal. Could, could have been the winner last week against Arsenal. Carries that threat with his pace when, when, when legs are tired later on as well. So, yeah, he's become... I think he's, he's, his best, 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 best moments of life have been from off the bench. Um, mm. Yeah, he had a long run of starts, didn't he? Didn't really do it. And he got taken out in the team. I think Coutinho coming, didn't he? Yeah. Well, uh, last week, so... Yeah, um... Yeah, the jury's still out on Bailey, isn't it? I think that's, that's a fair, fair to say. He's got it all to prove now. With Fifteen games to go. He said, he, um, and we said the players are being examined week in, week out ahead of the summer. So, um, so yeah, I think Bailey falls into that bracket for sure. Whether he's here next season, I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I think that's the point. There's Emery said he wants to test everything and make sure that come the start of next season, he's got a squad of players that he knows he can count on, but also mm-hmm. players that can deliver and. I don't know whether, I mean, Bailey's his own player. He might also think, well, I don't want to be second string. I'd rather be playing somewhere else that's uh, going to you know, positively impact my career more so. I don't know. But again, we'll see. Again, one to keep an eye on, I suppose, like there is mm-hmm. probably for a few of those players. But I don't really want to, you know, you want to improve your squad by improving your 11, which then improves your bench rather than just improving your bench. So, yeah, one to keep an eye on. Uh, yeah. We move on to a predicted 11 for the Everton game, the Nash. I think, was it, how many changes were there for Arsenal? I can't quite remember. It was Coutinho who came in for Bailey. Yeah, there was five, uh, wasn't there? So there's Coutinho. Cash um, came in. Cash. Um, did he come in? McGinn. Yeah. And the left back, Moreno. Moreno. There's four. Who's the other one? Uh, got no. Means the Chambers. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we got there. Uh, so I can't... I mean, how many changes can we expect for, um, for Everton? I it's difficult. I think McGinn obviously keeps his place. Yeah, um, yeah okay. And Moreno, you'd have thought Moreno would start and Cash would start. So. The full backs. I think so. Yeah, I think they did okay last week in that first yeah. half. Um, I think, yeah, I can't see many changes really. Yeah. Maybe Coutinho comes out of the team given given Everton set piece threats. And yeah, and I, 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 remember, I remember watching Coutinho there last season, didn't touch the ball, didn't really touch the ball at all. And that was that was throughout his his decent run of form as well. So I can't maybe Katina comes out, maybe come, come, comes from off the bench, but uh, maybe Jacob Ramsey in there for a bit of legs, bit of bit of power, bit of presence in there mm-hmm. on that left hand side. And I think it'd be as you were really. Brendan and Watkins, the two up front. Uh, Brendan scored a great goal there last year, wasn't he? Header. Yes. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think, I think as you were, maybe Ramsey for Katina. I know Ramsey hasn't performed of late, but. Other options there? Any other options? Maybe Moreno in front of Dean, but can't see that, can you? Yeah, yeah Luca Dean go back to Goodison Park for the second time because he did play for us, didn't he, last time? Yeah, uh, yeah the, the back two, I said back two, the two centre halves pick themselves at the moment. And yeah, Matty Cash would have thought keeps his place over Ashley Young. I mean, yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe experience. Uh, there was a yeah. comment I'll flag quickly. Uh, <laughs> Ashley Young, talking about the years versus Everton, that, that's probably the best. Best trip we've yes. had to go to the park in, well, forever. Um, that was some moment. But yeah, I, I think it probably keeps the same. McGinn, again, continuing probably coming out for uh, Jacob Ramsey, just say power, midfield running, but also a sort of that defensive element too. And Wendy would presumably keep his place. Um, but again, just a massive test for Villa because we need to start picking up points now. And we have got a run of games where, on again, on paper, it looks okay. But then the last run of games that we had that was okay on paper you know we had the Stevenage the Wolves the Leicesters yeah and how many points did we get out of that so <laughs> yeah we, I don't know I, th- I think it'll be I think it'll be really tight I think um Brett says one all written all over it I think that's probably the result I'd go with as well I'd, I'd love to win obviously but at the same time home games we've got coming up Palace at home Bournemouth at home and Forest at home our next three home games if you win all of those, I know that's not granted, but if you do win all of those, then you can kind of take your points on the road if, if they, you know, if you have to, because clubs are scrapping at the moment, like West Ham. Yeah, yeah. So those tricky away games in terms of this time of the year, but any other time you'd be thinking, oh, well, let's try and get a win. But if you can, you say, win your home games, get what you can on the road, maybe stay unbeaten for a bit, you could probably put up like a five or six match, you know, sort of um, unbeaten run if possible. And we'll do a post match show now, reviewing a 2 0 defeat to Everton, but <laughs> sort of, um, you know, mentality we need to be going into in, at least into the final months of the season. So, yeah, have you got a score prediction, Ash? 
Not it's I'm making towards a draw really, but do you know what? I'm I'm not sneaking a, a win. What and then yeah, two one win maybe. I'm going with Mafia there. Two one Villa. Two one Villa. Hopefully, uh, late goal. Um, and continue that little run we're on against Everton. So yeah, down to the players now. Big reaction needed. And it'd be like you know, I say, be some atmosphere there tomorrow. Everton buying for blood. They really are. I mean, uh, it's bouncing there at the moment. Jordan Pickford signed a new deal there. There's, yeah. I mean, it's bouncing there. So, yeah, set pieces, but I do have issues there, don't they? Um, mm. So, all eyes on Austin McFair, but he, I bet he's been a busy boy this week with his iPad. I bet, I bet he has. And, yeah. and yeah, set pieces, Villa need to switch on. And there might be a bit, bit, a bit, a bit of need between old uh, McGinn and uh, Dosh about his coat as well. But um, should be lively. Yeah. But yeah, 2 1 Villa. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll certainly take that. We'll be back on. Uh... Well, tomorrow it's Saturday tomorrow, isn't it? The, the week's flying. Um, yeah, back tomorrow night for a, a match, uh, post match review with me and Dan. I think I think Matt's off, so it'll be me and Dan for that. And uh, yeah, hopefully Villa can return to winning ways, free free on the bounce that we've lost. So that would be nice, and hopefully set us up for a good say end of the season because it is approaching nearly, uh, is, yeah. nearly now. So you know, it, sort of, of the, yeah, yeah, like the light nights and also um, yeah. Hopefully, a free point so we can discuss on tomorrow. Thanks, everyone, for um, interacting in the comments. And please leave a like rating as well. And please subscribe if you're not already. And, yeah, on to Everton. Up the villa. Yeah, up the villa. Thank you for listening to Claret and Blue and Aston Villa podcast.